I don't know why making a bookshelf tour video like stresses me out, but oh my God, the anxiety that I have trying to make this video for you guys, next level, but we got to get it over with. So let's just get started. Today, I'm giving you guys a 2023 bookshelf tour. I'm going to give you the gist of my library, everything you need to know, how I organize it, all that good stuff. And then we're going to go through every single shelf that I have and show you all of my books. So I'm currently sitting on the floor of my library. This is literally like the entire thing. It's a little tiny room right off of my living room. Room. So I basically have my living room right there and then you go up a couple of steps and you get into my library and then there's a couple of more steps over there that brings you into another room and this is like the end of my library. You're seeing everything behind me. I mean, I have this one bookshelf over here that my husband had built for me. He went to Home Depot, got all the materials, designed it himself and then put it together. So that is like a one of a kind bookshelf um, and then happens to be I have a bunch of like, you know, books stacked on the floor because I'm out of bookshelf space and then going up to that room, there's like two little ledges that I end up keeping books on as well. So we'll get to there eventually. And then happens to be on this wall is the um, bookshelf that you often see if you follow me on TikTok and Instagram, because that is the background for most of my content when I'm not doing YouTube. So that is more or less the gist of like, you know, my library and how it's laid out. I mean, I do also have this like nice little bean bag that I honestly do not really use very often because anytime that I try sitting in here and reading on this bean bag, I end up getting distracted by like all the books. I just end up staring at my shelves forever and then I can never really get through my book but it's here because sometimes my husband honestly likes to sit in here. So anyway, I do also have one in my bedroom. I'll have like a video right here for you guys to see. Nothing really special. I just keep like a handful of special editions. Like I have my Akatar special um, editions. Not, well, it's not special editions. It's my hardcover copy of Akatar and it has the Juniper Hill, um, you know, uh, dusk dust jackets on it. And then I have all of my Sophie Lark books there on one shelf. And then I also have like a bunch of like random Harry Potters. Like I have my hardcover Harry Potters there. And then I also have a couple of like the illustrated special editions. So, you know, that is, I think, every single book that I have more or less in my house. Most of them are here. Only a few of them are in my um, bedroom. And I think that's the gist of it. Oh, and I should also say that the shelf that's like on the wall, um, this was actually handmade by my husband as well. It actually was always like that. Like it was always indented into the space, but it used to only have three um, shelves. And I didn't really like how it looked because there was too much space in between all of them. So for my birthday a couple of years ago, I asked him to redo it for me. And then he did. So thank Thank you so much Tim for doing that as well if you did want to see actually a vlog of me doing it, it's probably a little cringy because I made it like right at the beginning of my channel but technically I did vlog the process of you know doing that whole thing so I'll have a link for that down below in case you're interested but either way I think that is the gist of like all of my shelves and then the way that I organize my library is kind of by vibe so I do split up my fantasy and my romance. So my fantasy is all behind me. Like this is an entire bookshelf of all of my fantasy books. And then I kind of put it in order of like the vibe that it has. It's like a fantasy romances and then heists and then just like random political intrigue sort of stuff. Like I kind of just have it, like it, it goes with the flow sort of situation. Only really makes sense in my head or if you've like read the book and just like know all of them. And then this entire shelf that I have over here is my romance shelf. And then everything in between is kind of like a jumble of everything that has fallen off of like like either shelf because obviously both of them are filled. So everything that didn't fit on any one of them ended up making it literally in between. So I think, I think that's everything that you have to know. So let's get into every shelf that I have. Cooper decided to join us. Say hello, Cooper. Say hello. All right, we're doing this by hand, so I apologize if I end up being a little bit shaky. But anyway, we've got my Throne of Glass, Akatar paperbacks, and then my Crescent City books. So all my Sarah J. Mass stuff. And then we have the Daughter of No World series, which I just recently got. I actually got 33 pages into the first book. And then I just wasn't really feeling it because I'm currently in a bit of a reading slump and I just wasn't so in the mood. So I ended up putting it down for now, but hopefully I'll get back to it soon. And then still haven't read Wolf Song. And then this is my Jennifer L. Armentrout books. This is my Rhapsodic series. Still have to read The Play prisoner series kind of dnf this series after the first book but i decided to keep it around anyway then i've got the iron face series and then the first book in the spinoff and then this is my favorite series of all time if you have not read them yet i highly recommend reading them because you know i absolutely love them they are literally like beat to shit because of how many times i've um read them but anyway this and this is a spinoff from this original trilogy then i've got the cruel prince i've got you know the ballad of never after and once upon a time and then i've got the kiss of 
of Deception series and then its spinoff and then this random duology that I have not yet read. And then onto the second shelf, I have a couple more fantasy romances of sorts. Like these two are standalones. This is like companions of sorts, more standalones, a duology. And then right behind here, I have like, you know, the curse so dark and lonely, if you can see it, whatever. I actually had read the first book and then never continued on with the second and third, but I keep them around anyway. I don't really know why. But anyway, still have to read this duology, still have to read this duology, have to read this, already read this, DNF'd this, don't ask me why it's still here. And then I have all of my Percy Jackson books. I have read them all. Big fan of Percy Jackson. And then I have my Grishaverse stuff. So I've actually read all of these minus this. I still got to get to this, but these are definitely my favorite in case anybody was curious. And then moving on, I have some more series. So I actually DNF to this book really early on, but I keep it around because I feel like I might've read it at like the wrong time. And I just got to give it like a second chance. And then anyway, I um, have read the first book in this series, but then I just never continued on with it because I wasn't really loving the first one. Still have to read this, still have to read this. I don't think I'm ever going to read this, but I keep it around anyway. And then I'm a big fan of Mistborn. I love these books, trying to reread them this year. And then I was a fan of this spinoff, but I have not yet read or even gotten the new book that recently came out. And then I still got to read this. And then I've got the Ember and the Ashes series. So it's like behind this thing. I've got all four books, read those a long time ago, was a fan kind of at the time. And then I've got the Fallen Kingdom series. And now for the last row on this fantasy shelf. So first up, I do have the first four books in like the Graceling universe. So I actually have read and really enjoyed the first three books in this series. I had binged them back to back. And then like a year later, these ha this one had come out. So I never ended up getting around to it because I was just like already out of the series. But I am hoping to get to this one this year. And then if I end up really still enjoying it, I'll get myself the next book that I know is already out. And then hopefully I'll read that too. Anyway, then I have some Slender William China books. So this is five books that I'm pretty sure are like companions of sorts, but I have I haven't read them, so I don't really know. And then right behind here, I have the Demon King series. So this is a collection of four books. I have read all of them and I did enjoy them. And then these next four books by her is actually a spinoff about the children from the people in this series. And I did read the first book in the series, but then I never continued on with the rest because I didn't love the first one. So I just like stopped for now, but maybe I'll go back. So anyway, that's that. And then I have the Winner's Curse series. So I actually did read the first book in this series, but then I just never continued on with it because like I liked it, but also so I just like wasn't really down at the time. So I have these sitting around because like maybe one day I'll go back to them. Probably not, but you never know. Then I have two random duologies that I have not yet read. Two random first books in a series that again, I have not yet read. First and last book in the Red Queen series have not read these. I have read the entire selection series, but I only own the first book because I had read them with my sister's copies. But I had started by, I bought myself the first book, read it, and then continued on with her set. So that's why I only have the first book. And then these are actually three random random books that I had gotten for my sister because she told me I should read it if I was a fan of this one but I was only like a semi fan of this one so then I never continued on with these books but I still have them sitting here even though they're technically not mine <laughs> and I have the first book in the tiger's curse I have legends and lattes which I just recently got and I'm planning to read it very soon and then I have the air awaken series so I do own all of the books in the series but I I have not yet read them so whatever um this is a series that I really enjoyed when I was younger but I tried rereading it this past year and it was not as good the second time around so we will leave these in my past but I was a fan of these when I was like you know 10 11 12 years old um and then I have the Raven Cycle series which I am a very big fan of I've read this series twice and I would love to do a reread of it this coming year have not read the Night Circus and then I read the first book in the Hazelwood series by Melissa Albert like I've read this one but then it never continued on with the second book and then this is like the short stories that are a part of this universe if you read it then you know so anyway I do own that book as well Next, I have The Ravens and the Monarchs. I have not yet read this duology. And then I have A Discovery of Witches. So funny story, this is actually the first book that I had purchased for myself when I was getting back into reading. I was randomly walking around a Target and then I just had seen it and I was like trying to get myself back into reading. And I happen to be a very big fan of this actor. I think his name is like Matthew something, Matthew Good or something like that. And I really like him in a lot of other stuff like Downton Abbey and some random other like movies, whatever. And then also in general, I've always been a really big fan of witches. So it's kind of what like pulled me to it. And I'm like, okay, let's give it 
it a shot. Then I ended up being like absolutely blown away. And it was kind of like the beginning of the end of like, okay, I think I now got to get myself back to reading because this is so much freaking fun. So I really loved this series at the time that I read it. But funny story, I actually tried to revisit this one this past year and it was not as great the second time around. So I'm just going to leave these in my past and not ruin it by trying to reread them again. So anyway, next up I have Babel and Ninth House. Have not yet read either of these. I have read both of these and I was a fan at the time that I read it, even though I think that I wouldn't love either of them as much if I read it like, you know, now. So happy that I read them at the time that I did because I'll always have good memories of them and we will not be rereading them in the future. Anyway, next up, Sir Sphere of Thrones and then A Darker Shade of Magic. I loved this series at the time that I read it. Oh my God, if you like fantasy series, check this one out because I remember being blown away at the time that I picked it up. Anyway, next up, I got my paperback Harry Potters and then I've got two Wilhelmina special editions back there. I do have them in like my, in the plastic of sorts because I want them to be like perfect forever. But anyway, they're really cool editions. I have the first and second book. And then after that, I have another JK Rowling book that I haven't read. And then I have House of the Cerulean Sea, which I have read and enjoyed at the time that I read it. And then this is a middle grade series. It's the first three books in a series that I think is either going to be like six or nine books. I don't really know. But either way, I was a fan of these at the time that I read it. I thought they were really fun. These three are middle grade books, but I haven't read any of them. And then I have read this duology. I was a fan, have not read these three books. I did read this duology. I liked book one, didn't like book two. I have read all four books in the Diviner series, even though I wasn't really a fan of them. So I don't know how I made it through four books, but somehow I did. And then I also have the Scythe series, which I have read. These two books technically belong to my sister, but I've had them in my library for so long that I feel like they're just officially mine. Same sister who had given me those three books a couple of years ago, and I never returned them to her because I never ended up getting around to reading them. So yeah, um, she technically owns these as well. But anyway, um, I think I read this when I was much younger, but I honestly don't remember it. So I can't really say if um, I liked it or not, but I was a fan of the movie Adaption. And then I did recently read this, didn't absolutely love it. So I probably honestly should return to my sister because I know she loves this book. But anyway, um, that's something to deal with for a different time so the game changer i have not read and now we're kind of up to like you know some of my more mysteries of sorts i have read this really enjoyed it was a really big fan of this series at the time that i read it then the inheritance game i have not yet read and technically right in this section i usually do have um the truly devious series as well as the charlotte Holmes series but currently my sister-in-law is borrowing them so they would usually be right here but they are currently missing anyway next up i've got the hunger games and then the spinoff i've got the version series so these are more like dystopians i have this random novella from the shadowry series just don't ask you know whatever i also have this series that i haven't read i know it's dystopian but i don't really know much other than that and then all of these books are my YA books. So I know that all of these are somewhat connected. That's kind of why I keep them in order, but I haven't read any of them yet. Haven't read this, have read this, haven't read, have read, have read, have read, have read, have read, have read, haven't read, haven't read, haven't read, haven't read, haven't read, haven't read, have read, have, have, have read. And then this is the rest of my YA collection. So I do have these four books by Jen Bennett, and then I have the entire Come Back to Me series. So I have read all of these books. I have not read read these three and then I haven't read these three either but technically I do have the Summer I Turned Pretty series by Jenny Han also that usually is right here but currently my sister-in-law is borrowing those as well so they're missing but I have read those haven't read these and then this is the last stack of books that I have sitting on the floor. So first up, I have Fifty Shades of Grey. This is like the special anniversary something edition. I haven't read it. I was just gifted it for free because I was like doing a post for someone. So anyway, it got this for free. It never read it. I was also gifted these books by the author, but I haven't read any of them yet. I read the first book in this series, never continued on with the second, read the first, never read the second, read this, read this, read this, never read this, never read this. And then I was gifted these by the publisher, but I haven't gone around to reading them yet. And so for this little section, whatever you want to call it, up the steps, I have all of my um, Shadow Hunter books. So I do have them in like chronological order because this is the order that I like to read them in in case you want to like screenshot it, whatever. Anyway, those are all of my books by her. And then this is something that I don't really like to show off very much because I just don't know what to do with these books. Like this is a pile of books that I plan to like either get rid of or I just really don't really want them around, but I just haven't unhauled them yet. And then all of these books are more or less books that I have received for free over time. I'm like a bunch of them are like either arts or were just sent to me like from publishers or authors or stuff like that and I don't really have a place that I want to specifically put them so I put them here.
So just to recap, we did just go through all of that, all of that, and then this little area. And before we move on to my romance shelf, I did want to quickly just show you that I have these two cool special editions. So this is a Great Gatsby. I was doing like an advertisement for someone, so they had sent me this book. I've never read the book, but I do think that it's really pretty, so I kind of keep it around. And then this is The Quidditch Through the Ages. I've honestly only like looked through this book once. I just thought it was like really nice, and I like collecting special edition Harry Potters, so that is why I keep that there as well. So now for my romance bookshelf. So I did recently make a whole video of reorganizing this. So if you did miss that and you want to check it out, I'll have a link down below because it didn't always used to look like this. But now I do have it organized in a little bit of a different order than I had it for a very long time, which is now kind of by series into companion series into standalone. So on the top, I kind of have all of my series together and then that moves into companion series and then eventually it just trickles into all of my standalones. And then on top of that, I do try to keep all the authors together. So like all my Kennedys and then all my Carl Sorensen's things along those lines like all my Mariana Zapata's right there and then on top of that I also try to do it by vibe so it's kind of like some of my darker romances into my sports romances into my small towns romantic suspenses and then it slowly just trickles into all of the standalones where I only have a couple of books from each author so that is more or less how this is generally organized it's not 100% perfect but let's get into each and every shelf because I feel like it will make more sense when you see it up close oh and I also forgot to say that I have read the majority of the books that is on the shelf and the way that I can tell of which ones I have read and haven't read besides from my memory because I'm, I'm very good at knowing what I have and haven't read is that I just pop them out slightly so that I can tell when I'm just staring at my shelves which ones have and haven't been read yet so like I literally have like only a handful of books like there's none even over there like I literally have like three books on this shelf that I haven't been read and then there's a couple on this shelf that haven't been read either so that's kind of how when I'm quickly staring at this and being like oh what do I want to read next that is how I quickly spot the ones that haven't been read because for the most part, all of these have been read by me. All right, I'm way too lazy to go and get my ladder, so we're just gonna have to do this with zooming in. So up on top, I have my Addicted Slash Callaway books along with like the spin-off series and then the Ravenhood series by Kate Stewart. So all of these books have to be read in order. They're like full on series. So that's kind of why this shelf in general starts off there. And then on the second shelf, I have a couple of duets that have to be read in order for them to make sense. Like they're not companions, they have to be read as one story. And then that kind of moves me into some of my darker um, companion series. For like these are some mafia books and these are just some like darker steamier ones of sorts and then this is kind of some workplace environment companion series and then that slowly moves me into some of my sports romance companion series and then some more of my sports romance companion series and like even right here the Lauren Asher's these aren't sports romances but I wanted her all of her books to be together so that's kind of why I just I had to like pick and choose like which one's gonna make more sense and I just decided I'd rather have all of her stuff together and then some more Carla Sorensen which is sports romances and then Candy Steiner happens to be she writes sports romances Romances, but she also writes a small town. So I kind of used her as the middleman of like, let's put all of her books together and have her be the midpoint between sports romances and then small town romances. So that's all my Candy Steiner books. And then slowly I get into some more small town, a companion series of sorts. And that slowly leaves me, like leads me into, um, you know, romantic suspenses, like Debbie Perry and Catherine Cowles writes a lot of small town romantic suspenses. So that's kind of how, you know, it all makes sense. It goes with the flow of the vibe of source and that gets me into the next row which kind of trickles me into basically just a bunch of standalones but by the same author so like all of my R.S. Gray books and then all of my Mariana Zapata books so what happens to be I have these in publication order but technically they're all standalones so it doesn't really matter what order they're in I just have all of her books next to each other and then I kind of have the Christina Lawrence and then I have a couple from V. Keelan, Penelope Ward, Elizabeth O'Rourke and then it kind of slowly trickles into like oh I only have three books by Colleen Hoover I only have a couple of books by Penelope Douglas I only have two books by Kate Stewart. So even though I have, you know, her series up here, I decided that since these are standalones and I have more than one, I'll put these here and then I'll put those up there. And then it kind of just trickles in that way up until I get to this last shelf where I have still a couple of more books that I have like two from one author, two from one author, and then it slowly just gets into my standalone. So for here specifically, I still keep it by vibe. So this is kind of a couple of like my general rom-coms, like some enemy lovers, some fake dating, things along those lines. And then that kind of moves me into just some sports romances or college setting of sorts. Like all of these are either like college sports romances or they take place in like 
like high school, stuff along those lines. And then I kind of move into some more of my taboo of sorts. Like these are like college, but like darker, taboo, teacher, student, things like that. And then I have some nanny romances, some single parent romances, and then some romantic suspenses of sorts. And then right at the end, I have a couple of my darker standalones. So like these are two reverse harems. This is a dark romance. And then like, you know, motorcycle romance and then like priest, which is priest. <laughs> wow, am I happy that's over. The anxiety level still through the roof for some reason. I don't know why this video is like so intimidating for me to film, but I'm just happy that it's over with. So I really hope that you enjoyed watching it. I hope that you got everything out of it that you were possibly looking for when you clicked on it. So leave me a comment down below if you had any thoughts towards it. I'd love to hear any comments that you have on how I can make it better next time when I probably do this again next year or just what you really enjoyed about this video specifically. But either way, if you did like it, please give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to my channel if you're not currently subscribed because I would really appreciate it. But either way, I just appreciate you taking the time to watch my videos. So thank you so much for that. And with that said, until next time, enjoy reading.